My friends, this video is about all the improvements I've made to my sawmill this year. I built the sawmill from scratch several years ago and have used it as is or as it was built for many years and have cut quite a bit of lumber with it. But I got to thinking it's time for some improvements. There's many improvements that can be made. They don't really require a lot of work, but we'll get to all those right after this. My friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop, and as I mentioned, we're going to be focusing on improvements that could be made to my sawmill. The very first improvement that I wanted to make was to shorten the height. I knew I had it overly tall, and being overly tall was a contributing factor to the little bit of wiggle waggle that I was getting with the saw. For the most part, the wiggle waggle doesn't make any difference. All it's doing is moving the blade forwards and backwards from side to side, but less is better. And I knew if I shortened the height, I could uh, improve it. It greatly. So this is where we start with the video. Enjoy. One of the very first things I want to do uh, in order to cut this off is to climb up there and see how it's all attached. You might think I should know that, but the truth is I don't remember all the details because it was five or six years ago when I built this thing. And uh, I've used it a lot, but I've never really crawled up there and taking a look at it since it was built. Before I go cutting things off, I want to know exactly how I built it up there and how it's going to affect anything when I start shortening it. So let's just get up there and take a look. Specifically, what I'm concerned about are these cogs here. Um, how they're attached to this screw rod that goes down through here. This uh, screw turns and that's what raises and lowers the whole carriage. So I'm hoping I could tell by getting up here and looking. And I guess there's a set screw there. And there's another set screw on the other side I can feel over here. So hopefully that's all there is to it. But that seems a bit sketchy. <laughs> My idea is just to cut a 18-inch section out of this, drop everything down 18 inches, and then re-weld it. That may not work on the threaded part. It should work on everything else, I think. A few of my little complications are that I've got a switch mounted over there. Let me go over there and show you. So we have a switch mounted right here and a little bit of conduit taking wires up up there. So all of that's going to have to come loose so this can be moved down. I'll probably move the switch down a little bit lower to a few inches anyway. So maybe I'll get started by removing that stuff and uh, getting that out of my way. My friends, it's extremely disappointing and I know it's not good for you guys either that uh, I didn't get any footage of me actually cutting the height off of this sawmill. I did drop all four posts down 18 inches. Suffice it to say, I just basically took out an 18 inch segment and just sat everything down 18 inches. Unfortunately, none of that was on camera, but fortunately I did get the modifications that I made to the winch and that's what you're about to see next and I think you'll enjoy this part even more than just cutting off 18 inches of the sawmill. Well, you can't really see too much because I've already taken it down, but the winch used to be up here. So I've got the winch off of this already. That winch is what turns these uh, screws, which makes this go up and down. So let me show you what I've done so far over here. Here's the winch. This fits on top up here like so. This was the sprocket that I had on there. I have bought a new round here for this. This replaces the other one. I have bought this new sprocket, much bigger sprocket. I'm hoping that the winch will be powerful enough to turn this. Not even sure if it can. So there's, there's the sprocket that's been on there and this is the one I'm putting on there. So this is gonna make a huge difference in speed. If the winch can turn this, this is gonna really change the how fast things go up and down. So my first charge is I have to weld this in place. For the record, this this one here is about an inch and a sixteenth and that's what it takes to fit over this shaft. This one 
was only an inch when I bought it, but I've already turned it on the lathe and now it fits the shaft also. So it's ready to be installed. But first, like I said, I have to uh, weld this on there. So we'll get set up to do that. Once again, it's a long way from a beautiful weld, but it'll hold. Okay, now that we've got her welded up, looks to be good enough. You know, it's not a fancy weld by any stretch, but it's strong enough to hold what I'm wanting to do. And besides that, if it don't work, I may need to change this, so I'm not going to weld it up any better than that for now. I'm pretty sure it'll be just fine, and if it isn't, I can always weld it more. This small bracket that uh, I had on here originally fits there like so. And then this bracket here goes over the top of that, and this spins in there. Well, this is small for a reason, I remember now, because it had to fit inside this. My new sprocket is not going to fit in there. It's out by a couple inches. So now what do I do? Do I make a custom new bracket here to make this work? I'll have to figure that out before I can proceed. Now this might be a bit drastic, but I'm going to just start by cutting this bracket in two. Uh, boy, no going back after this. Well, it's in two pieces now. We'll have to see where we go from there. Well, I've got it set up to weld an extension onto that uh, top piece. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Sleep low in the mountain. I recall, I recall. I think that ought to get the welding done on the top part. So I gotta cool this off and then I'll weld this other piece on. Well, we got that extension welded on there. Now I need to weld this back on and then there'll be a spacer here, you know, there's still a spacer problem right here that I'll have to figure out. But I want to go ahead and get this welded back on, and that gives me clearance here for the chain and everything, so that's going to be fine. And let me get that welded on, and then we'll see what happens next. You can probably see a 90 degree right angle there with this uh, magnetic clamp, and I'm just going to tack weld it there a little bit, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Good day. Well, my standard line, it ain't pretty, but I think it'll hold. So now you can see that the bracket now fits up on there. And now I need to find some kind of an extension between here and here and decide how to do that. If I could just get some kind of a spacer in between here, that would probably be good enough. I just don't know what kind of spacer I could do, but I'll figure it out. Well, in my scrap metal, I found the this bar. I've already cut it off to length, and one way this bar is narrower than the other way, but when you mix the narrow and the wide way together like this, then you get exactly the right width for the spacing I need. And then I've got to drill two holes through this after I get this welded together. But I'm going to go ahead and weld these two together as my spacer right now. This is overkill being this solid, but on the other hand, it's going to have a lot of torque on it, so solid is good. Well, I got those two pieces of steel welded together. Now I've got the bracket sitting on here so I can mark the holes. I've got my punch here, and it 
doesn't fit the hole perfectly tight, but it's pretty close because I'm sure these holes are millimeter and these punches are imperial. So I'm just going to give it my best shot here. And now, ain't nothing to it except to do it, and that means to drill through an inch and seven eighths of solid steel twice. So that'll be fun. I guess I'll get on to that. I didn't realize it, but those holes are up pretty far. But I just lined them up with the bottom of this thing, so that's, that's how they lined up. So hopefully that'll be okay. We'll see how it goes. Well, I think I got all the parts fabricated. I didn't do a very good job of showing that, but I got my holes drilled through here. Trenched these two little spots out. Those two trenches there are trenched out in this spacer, so that should keep it all about the same. And I'm ready to put it all back together. I have to get this sprocket on here. I'm not sure my key's gonna fit. I uh, made that hole bigger, so I may have to broach this keyway out a little bigger in the sprocket. Didn't think about that. Either that or cut the keyway down, one of the two. It almost goes. Try with a little hammer persuasion. Have to get it all the way down on there first before I try the bracket. Yep, that's all the way on. So now I'll try to put the keyway back in there if it'll let me put it in there. Might be better if I just filed the key itself down just a little bit. I think I'll just do that. I'll do that off camera. Well, I filed a little bit of the keyway off and it seems to be driving in there, so it seems to be working. Probably not the best way to do that, but uh, you know, sometimes I don't use the best practices just because I don't feel like it. But I will. I'm gonna get me a punch and punch that down in there to be better. So I'll just take a punch and hit the punch instead of hitting the keyway. Whoop, that's not a punch. Here's a punch. Well, that's full depth. So that'll work. Well, that worked perfectly. So now I'm gonna lock these, uh, lock this on the shaft with these Allen's, Allen keys or Allen screws. There's where it stopped. I'm just going, going in on them until they stop first and then we'll tighten them up. So there's where the stop is and get it down in there good and we'll make sure we get this good and tight so it doesn't ever slip on us. I don't think it will anyway with the keyway but this will just be insurance. That's good and tight. Do the same thing here. This one's going down right on the key. So that that's locked on there, that ain't coming off. The guy from Farmcraft says that ain't going nowhere. So now we'll chuck this up in the vise here just to hold it still. So now I've got the motor in the vise here just for a third hand, really. I don't have it very tight. And I'll set that in there I'll put this piece on that I remade and now we got to get the spacers in here let's see how all this goes together if it goes together and I really don't know for sure but we're gonna give it a whoops let's see here we gotta turn this around like so one screw started sorta of started See if we can get the other screws started. Then we'll take our 10 millimeter wrench and run these down. I probably should have put washers on those. All right, I'll get some washers. I think that'd be better. Okay, I got some washers on these bolts. And now we'll see if we can snug it all down. I don't think I have big enough washers. I may have to switch that out. I think that's all going to work though. We may have a problem when it comes to our L bracket. I'm not exactly sure how that's all going to work yet. But I think it'll probably work. I feel like it'll probably be okay. So we got some more fun stuff going on here yet. I think that goes like that now that I think about it. But anyway... 
I'll clean that up and I think I'm going to take these back out and put some thicker, heavier washers on that. I got her all back together. I, uh, I ended up having to mill uh, almost an eighth inch off of this uh, thickness here, the spacer, to get it to work, work out square. But it worked out really nice. It's just about like it was when it came from the factory in terms of strength, I think. Now we'll see how it works up on the sawmill. I've got the winch with the new sprocket mounted up on the sawmill. And I took the chain down because this chain's not going to be near long enough anymore. And I'm going to see if we can't, you know, add some length to it. So the first thing we have to do is open the chain up. I found the lock link right here. There's always a, a lock link. Can you see that there that's different than the rest of them? It's got this thing that you can open up. And so that's what I'm going to do is open that up. Let me rephrase that. I'm going to attempt to open that up. There we go. I got something to move. There we go. All right, I got it, I think. I don't want to lose this, so I'm going to put this inside this little tray here. And then there's a link on the outside. And then these two pull out of there. So that's what you end up with. That comes out. This is a nice clean job, as you can tell. Everything is greasy. Okay, so now what I got to do is go up, put this up there, and see if I can measure how much the gap is. So I've got to get me a tape measure ready and see if we can do that. I've got to get this chain wrapped around these three pulleys. So I'll start with this one here. And I'll try to get it wrapped around this one. There we go. And then around this one. And then measure my gap. And I bought 10 feet of chain, knowing I wouldn't need that much. That It's just that's how much you could buy. You can't buy a shorter length. So I'm going to need about uh, 3 or 4 inches. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I need it almost exactly 4 inches according to that. Probably a little less than 4 inches if if it could be worked out. Well, from hole to hole, it's about three and three quarters or something like that. So I'll just go cut a piece of chain that'll hopefully make that work. I can always go in, so I don't want to cut it any longer than that because I can't go out much more. If I cut it at about uh, three and three quarters or slightly less, I'll be good. Well, it's pretty easy to put these chains together. Out of that new 10-foot chain, that's all I needed is that little tiny piece. Then we just put this in through here. We put this through here. So that starts the length. And then we just put this cap back on. And then we put this little keeper back in place. And that's all there is to it, I think. So let me see if, if that keeper will go back in place. Yep, yep, it did. So now we just got to do that again. The new chain came with one. Plus I bought a bunch in case I needed them, but I don't need them really. So, very simple really. There's nothing to this. I hope it goes on there as easy as, as this is going. And I just got to push the keeper on there, and if it goes, then we're good. We're good. So now we have a new loop piece of chain. Let's go up there and see if it fits. I don't know how well you'll be able to see any of this, but the question is, can I see it? And I'm not sure that's the case either. I guess I'll start by getting up there and putting the chain back on the two in sprockets. Oh my gosh. Just not simple. That one's on. Ooh, I gotta keep it away from this electrical connection here. My luck it'll short us out. It goes on there, but 
I hope I've got enough adjustment, and I don't think I do. I, and I even made it shorter. I only made it three and a half inches. That's amazing how I don't think that's going to work. I'm going to have to shorten it up some more, I bet. That's as much adjustment as I got, so I'm going to have to take one link out at least. I measured it three and three quarters. I only made it three and a half, and it's still too long. So I got to take a link out. Well, the way these chains work, you really have to take out two links. So I had to take out two links. Hopefully, it's going to be the right length now. And that I have enough adjustment in this to make it work. Okay, I gotta give it another shot. Let's see. Hoping the height is still right. I I don't know about that even. What well, might have to do some adjustments on the height. I gotta tighten this up. It's not tight enough. I guess the first thing is I want to tighten up this height adjustment so that it's right. It's as high up as it can go. I can't go any higher. And now we'll see if we can tighten it up a little bit with this adjustment. This, this adjustment still looks like it's got some room. Hopefully it does. Uh, up the wiring and let's see if this thing works. I'll be tickled if this really works because I got my doubts. Looks like the wiring is going to be just a hair short now because I had to move it out some. You know it couldn't be right. It'd have to be short. It's short by about a sixteenth of an inch. I might be able to wiggle it around and make it work. Well now's the time for the test. I don't know, haven't tested it yet. I'm going to push the up lever and see if this thing starts raising. I'm going to make sure I, you know, I get everything out of the way here. Let me just look at it real quick. doesn't look like there's anything in the way except my head on that thing. I just banged it. Um, let's try it. Do you think it'll turn it? I don't know. No problem at all, and it's spinning it much faster. I would say it's two or three times faster than it was before. That's pretty nice. I don't know, it's, it's still slow. It's way slower than your average sawmill, but I'm not in a huge hurry. I just don't want to waste time, and this is working pretty good now. That's not too bad, and the winch seems like it's got plenty of power, it's not warm. Wow, I'm happy with that. Success, finally! It's late today, so I'm going to call that good enough for today, and I'll work on the water tomorrow. I am tickled with that. I'm glad I went with that great big one. I almost wish I would have went bigger now, except that would have been hard to, to configure. This was hard enough. But that's real solid. I don't think there's a problem anywhere. It's just about as good as it's going to get. As I've already mentioned, I didn't do a very good job of filming all the improvements. So I'll just tell you about some of them. One of the improvements, and probably a major improvement, is that I re-leveled all of these, the height of all of these. And they are now within 1 16th of an inch from that end to this end. They're just as perfectly level as they can be now. Another huge improvement I made is adding a toolbox to the sawmill. This way, I've got all the essential tools that I need right here at my fingertips. Very handy. 
Another huge improvement was putting on a much bigger battery. Prior to this, I only had a lawnmower battery in this. You can see this is a deep cycle marine battery. This thing really works well. I also added this plate so that I had a place to set my bucket rather than hanging the bucket. I used to hang the bucket from here on a wire, but that was when the sawmill was much taller. Now that I've cut the height off of this, there wasn't any room to hang it. Adding this little plate was handy. I still probably need to find way, you know, something on here to keep the bucket from sliding off. Then I improved the water flow with this little, uh, just real cheap inline little uh, on off faucet there. Made a bracket right here so that this can sit in there. And then I put this little wedge in there to hold it exactly in the right place. And you can see there's water dripping out on this. This thing's been sitting out overnight and it rained a lot last night. So I had it covered with a tarp though. I just took the tarp off for these videos. Then the other huge improvement I made was in the blade tensioning and in, in the angle of this wheel. I put brass, I put little brass inserts on the ends of these. And what this does is it lets it pull this way or that way. Same way on this side here, I put a brass insert in there. And then the biggest change was this handle. Prior to this, all I had was this little L hook here and I had to put a pipe on there to spin it. Now I just welded this handle on here and now it's very easy to tension the blade, very simple. So that was a huge improvement right there. And then the final improvement I made was these little bars right here. And this just goes up and connects through here, and that locks the sawmill in place on the frame so that when I'm pulling it around, it doesn't roll. I have one on each side. As you can see, there's another bar there. And that's better than bungee straps because the bungee straps have give to them, and everything is rocking back and forth when I have the bungee straps. When I bolt those two bolts down, it doesn't move at all. Very solid much better for transport. Overall, I'm very happy with the sawmill. So here's what she looks like in total. Well, only after about an hour of setup and, you know, tweaking and fixing and changing and who knows what else. I just made a bunch more little minor, minor improvements, but uh, everything's in real tip top shape or it should be. So this will be the first startup and see what happens. Here we go. The day I met her on the mountain in the fall. I haven't got everything all gathered up yet, so I need to go get a square and make sure that the board's going to be square. As you might be able to tell, I'm starting out with just a small post, and I'm going to cut a bunch of small posts first, mainly just to get them out of the way, out of the pile, and also just for warming up my skills here and getting back in practice. There she is. She got a little bit of fuzz on one corner, but that's not too bad out of a really tiny, tiny uh, tree. Um, just a real small log, but that's a four and five eighths inch square post. So that's a pretty good, good size post right there. Plenty big to do a lot with it. Great for the farm here, uh, making fence posts or gate posts or anything like that. So we'll 
move on and cut another one. Thank you.